Welcome to another episode of the Headlight Restoration Pro, where I'll be showing you how to take headlights like this, busted and disgusted, and turn them into something like this, perfection. At the same time, showing you how to spray coat like a boss. No fuss, no mess, no drip, no drops. Perfection. Stay tuned. The Headlight Restoration Pro. All right, let's get down to business. Like uh, promised, uh, with the title of this video, I'm going to show you how to spray coat like a boss, okay? And this can uh, translate into any kind of spray machine or uh, any kind of aerosol can that you have. The same method kind of applies. Um, but you do have to worry about uh, what spray coat you're using. Uh, typically, when you're using any kind of spray coat that uh, is headlight certified, they tend to be um, fast drying, the good ones, okay? If you're spraying something that's uh, on your headlight that takes longer than, let's say, five minutes to dry, you shouldn't be putting on a headlight, point blank, period. Uh, headlights uh, need to be sealed fast, and they need to... Uh, dry fast, okay? It doesn't need to cure all the way, but that surface needs to crust, okay? Which just means the surface of the headlight uh, drying, which is going to dry first, okay? And it's going to dry from the outside in, okay? Because it's uh, exposed to air, which is, uh, you know, air and weather and environmental factors which are going to dry that crust faster. The reason why you want this is because... Uh, you don't want air to, you know, fall into it. Nine times out of ten, you're not going to have, if you're doing headlight restoration, especially if you're doing mobile headlight restoration or any other kind of restoration, you're not going to have a, um, you know, a, mo a, a, you know, stable or sterile uh, work environment like a painting booth that uh, somebody who is a painter or something will have in their shop. So you got to worry about that, okay? That's a very slim uh, chance that somebody's going to have that unless they are a painter and they paint cars and they have to do headlights then you can just do it and walk away throwing a heat lamp on it or do whatever you're gonna do I don't advise heat lamps um, because it affects uh, the way uh, certain clear coats dry uh, and, and, and function and cure and all that stuff uh, you know sometimes if you can cure it too fast it's not going to achieve the correct uh, clarity which I have learned in the past. Uh, I've tried heat guns. I've tried UV lights. I've tried, you know, expensive. I have a $250 uh, angled heat lamp that rolls up to it. And, it, you know, it just, you know, I used them for quite a bit of time. And then I, I finally realized that these things and studied that these things, even especially this one, uh, the Meguiar's that I use, um, are uh, more of a evaporating, drying uh, compound, kind of like super glue. Is why you can smell it so bad, why it stinks so bad, is because it dries better with the air exchange. Uh, just meaning that it's it um, pumps off chemicals, you know, once it's drying, and and then you know forms a crust. So, anyways, you want the crust. That's the number one thing you want to form, so you don't have any kind of things blowing into it. I've had. Uh, people's dogs come by and a dog shake, you know, you know how dogs shake themselves and it's like, chee, 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 chee. come by and, oh, hi, what are you doing? Have a restoration? Cool. And their dog shakes and I'm at that spot and the freaking hair go all into the, you know, the clear coat. And what do you do? You have to wait till it dries, take it down and start over from scratch. Sucks. Yeah. But I mean, there's no other way around it to, um, you know, you don't want to try to nitpick, you know, it's always better to remove the whole thing over, let it dry and start over because once you start trying to spot change things and take things off, you're never going to get the proper finish on the headlight. There's always going to be some kind of defect or, you know, something weird looking about it. You want it to form that nice, pretty shell that's uniformed, even and leveled out. But uh, air drying is the best, okay, and forced air drying is even better than that, okay. Uh, air drying is uh, self-explained, just letting it sit there and dry in whatever temperature or heat uh, is going on, or, you know, a cold or whatever, you know, these... Um, uh, certain clear coats, you know, can be used. UV clear coats for headlights um, can be used in cold weather. I just did an S550 
twin turbo BMW uh, this morning and it was about 38 degrees. It's just got to know what you're doing. You just got to make sure that that can is not 38 degrees. You got to, uh, you know, put it in your pocket, put it in the engine bay, um, put it in a cup of warm or hot water. You just got to make sure that it's not 30, you know, five, you know, under 35 degrees or, you know, preferably in the 40s or higher. Uh, just so it sticks, dries, and adheres correctly. Once it goes lower than that, it starts messing up and doing weird things. But forced air is king, okay? Um, it doesn't get much better. With the forced air, you're, you're not only getting um, a large amount of air and current dumped on the headlight, which speeds up the chemical exchange of uh, the air drying, kind of like super glue or, you know, when women paint their nails, uh, you know, certain things, um, you know, speed up the drying process. When women use their nails, they use the UV light. Um, this, uh, I've tried UV lights on this and it works well, but, uh, the best is air drying, especially for clarity. It doesn't, it, it, it almost enhances the clarity. It lets the chemical do what it's supposed to do. So not only does forced air drying, uh, dump that up, you know, dump a bunch of air into the zone or whatever. And, um, you know, speed up the chemical exchange the air you know the evaporation of the uh, chemicals or the exchange of the chemicals that uh, the clear coat is releasing which is why it's really bad to breathe it in you always want to use a mask um, but the forced air also pushes away any kind of debris that might float over and it's one of the reasons why I can uh, do a headlight restoration a full headlight restoration so quick because what I do is say I'm working on this side right now when I finish this side here I let it drive for about a minute and a half and then I I go and set up the other side uh, but what I do is immediately after finishing the spray I turn my two uh, fans on onto it and I have them facing the opposite side where the other light is over on this side and that way when I'm starting uh, it just blows all the debris away from that light just for a safe measure um, because if you start too quick and it's too cold and you don't gauge it right uh, dust is gonna fly over to this light that you just finished and it's gonna embed itself in the surface of that clear coat so you always want to be careful with that and um, you know forced air drying really helps with that not only debris from working on the other side but from insects during the summer uh, flies and bees and wasps and stuff they love ladybugs they love the smell of this clear coat for some reason so you want to uh, keep all that stuff off of it and you know that is the power of um, a secondary thing uh, that's good for forced air drying but no, one of the number one things besides clarity and adhesion that you want for your spray is that you want it to dry fast. Uh, this Meguiar's clear coat, uh, even in cold weather, like uh, like I said, I, I did a headlight earlier and it was about like 30 degrees, 38, 38 degrees or something like that outside. It still dried with forced air drying. Uh, it went in about 45 seconds, the crust. And then the whole thing uh, probably dry in about a minute and a half. So you want something that dries extremely fast. But you see how I'm working that corner with the interface pad and the P500? That's what you want to do with those spots you can't reach with the three inch drill. I mean, I used to try to be fancy and I have all these little dremels and attachments and stuff, but it's, it's just a waste of time because you're going to get the same result if you just hit that little tiny area, which is probably about like, you know, uh, you know, half an inch by half an inch with, uh, you know, you know, by hand. Okay. You save yourself a lot of time and a lot of, uh, energy, uh, by doing it that way. So I'm just trying to show you guys, uh, this is, uh, once again, this is a Toyota Yaris, uh, little tiny Toyota, big lights, of course. Uh, all the little cars have ginormous lights. They tend to have bigger lights than big vehicles. I have no idea why that is. Maybe it's some kind of safety standard. I don't know. I, uh, contrary to belief, I don't know everything about headlights. I just know a lot. <laughs> that's just being modest but anyhow um yeah so so um 
try to show you some things with sending this light but like I said the function of this video is to show you how to spray and also uh, show you a couple things about uh, the headlight and ideology of why uh, the headlights go clear and why this headlight is white right now okay if you want to learn more in depth about why this headlight is white right now and why you should never spray a headlight at this stage which most people do or most headlight or a lot of headlight restorers do um, you know check out this video here uh, I just uh, loaded it uh, the other day or last night or so and um, you know check this out this is very informative and it'll tell you why you should never spray a light when it looks like this you should never spray a white a light where you can't see through it it's a real cute magic trick or even if it's foggy or not if it's not as clean and uh, crystal or clear as you can get it you shouldn't be spraying it it's a really cute magic trick. Uh, it's it's foolery. It's a really cute trick, though, uh, to you know wow somebody that doesn't understand or know about headlights or science or headlight restoration. Because I could literally spray this right now and it would turn clear. So why don't I? Check out that video and you'll see why. I'm not going to go into it too much in here. But you gotta check that video out and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, see how white that is? I will go in uh, with why you cannot see through the headlight right now is because, you know, this is a transparent, um, polycarbonate is a transparent uh, plastic, a highly visibly transparent plastic, okay? That's why they use it. It's one of the most transparent, durable plastics in the world, okay? That's why they use it. Um, the reason why you can't see through it right now is because the surface of it is scarred up, scratched up, uh, uneven, uh, you know, uh, just broke down. It looks like, um, you know, a woven blanket underneath a microscope or a sponge or something like that. It's um, really messed up and there's a lot of pores and a lot of striations and divots on that surface microscopically. Okay, your eye can't see it. Um, you can see a little tiny bit, but it goes way deeper than that when you, uh, if you magnify the surface of this, if your eyes can see that much. But what your eyes can see is light. Okay, your, um, your light, you know, the reason why it's this white is because of that. And also, the light isn't really um, reflecting off of it. It's absorbing all of the light right now. So, um, it's a little scientific. I'm not trying to get into it on this video, but it is absorbing the light right now instead of reflecting the light, instead of having the light pass through. Because there's two things a clean, crystal clear, perfectly functioning headlight is going to do. It's going to allow light or sunlight pass through it. And it's going to allow certain um, degrees of light or different um, uh types of UV light to ricochet off or bounce off, okay, or reflect off, okay, these are the only way your light, your eyeballs can see, okay, your, your eyes see color and your eyes see color in these things and everything and shapes and everything that you see in this video, everything that you see when you're walking down the street or you wake up or you look in the mirror, the only reason you see it is because your eyes are registering your, excuse me, your eyes are picking up uh, light that is bouncing off of surfaces, okay? And then your mind, you know, your mind interprets what it is seeing through your eyes. Your eyes are nothing but an appendage of your brain. So initially, your brain is just seeing, you know, light reflecting off things. But you can literally spray it at this point and it would turn clear to an extent or it would be, um, you know, a clear headlight. And it would be a thousand percent wrong. You would think, oh, it's clear, it's good, this and that, but there'd be so many drawbacks and so many, so many bad things going on that you wouldn't even know. You would have to have somebody like me explain it to you. But basically, you'd be losing out on a shitload of uh, distance that your light would be thrown, okay? Uh, it would be, you know, it would cut it down so significant it's not even funny you know it'd be like oh my lights are clear and they're good but they don't function 
correctly. They're only functioning about 75% of what they uh, should, believe it or not. If you, like I said, once again, if you want a little bit more on that, look at this video here. It's up and running now. I uh, don't want to go too far into the science of things, uh, you know, too far onto this video. Uh, but that video here will definitely uh, sum that up for you some more. Okay, so back to this uh, headline here. Um, we're going to go ahead and fast forward this a little bit here to cut some time on this video. Get down to some spraying. Now, if you notice how white this is, you can literally spray that light down and, you know, wipe it with a cloth to make it a little less white and then spray it down and it will become clear, you know, and then, you know, do all kind of other stuff and then clear it again, all those, all that jazz and it would be like a, a, a nice thrill, a cute magic trick, but it's just not practical and it doesn't work in the long run and it will damage your light in the long run. Uh, you know, and as a business and as the person I am, I don't want to um, make those mistakes or uh, mess up somebody's light uh, in longevity or for the long run or basically uh, mess up the headlight health. I want uh, my viewers to get associated with a term headlight health. I'm the only one that's probably ever coined it. Uh, but it just means the longevity of your headlight, uh, and, you know, to keep it healthy. You can have a crystal clear headlight, like I said, sprayed at that point, but the damage that's going to come in the long run is ridiculous. You're going to have a lot of side effects. You're going to have a lot of spider cracking. You're going to have a lot of overheating. You're going to have, you know, your your headlight's not going to work and function as well. You're going to be losing like 40 yards, anywhere between, you know, like 20 and 40 yards of light projection. Um, you know, it just, just crazy things are going to happen. You're going to have to have... Uh, you know, maybe three, you know, to four times more of the surface removed on each headlight restoration. Uh, you know, just a lot of things come to play with it that people, normal people, or even normal headlight restorers don't understand or don't get or have never been told that, uh, you know, doing it that way can really... Uh, you just mess things up in the long run and they're the, you know the only way they can learn is from experience when those cars start coming back to them because uh, I want you to say that I want everyone to hear this anybody who's anybody that's watching this should know um, and you know whether you're you know on my level or whether you're in the you know a novice or whether you're just a regular guy that's about to do their headlight headlights or do restoration for the first time everyone must know there's no such thing in this freaking world as permanent this world we walk on is not permanent it has an expiration date it will not last forever okay so when people say and people have these videos out that have been out for years and say how do you store <laughs> your headlights permanent are they you see an ad in newspaper permanent headlight restoration don't go to them they don't know shit okay or they're lying to you or they're just uneducated cuz I mean permanent does not mean three years okay permanent does not mean four years permanent means I can drive my freaking car until the end of time until I'm 50 years old I won't need a headlight restoration so if you're saying permanent I mean it's 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 a scam it's just it's just redundant okay it's not permanent. Nothing on a vehicle is permanent. The vehicle itself is not permanent. Not one part on a vehicle is permanent, okay? Um, especially working parts like a headlight or, um, you know, a, a oil filter or something. Nothing is permanent, okay? So, um, yeah, get, her, get, her, get away from that thought process. It's funny that people can even fix their mouth to say uh, headlight restoration or any kind can be permanent. There's nothing you can do or put on this headlight to make it permanent, okay? Uh, generally, uh, you, know, uh, you know, even stuff that's not... Only way to get up to a level of like five, six years, seven years, this and that, is with maintenance, okay? Even if you put on the strongest... 2k clear that will destroy your headlights at the end of uh you know a couple years it will destroy your headlights even if you can put that on 
um, it will not be, you know, permanent. It's going to go bad sooner or later and have all kind of other side effects, uh, you know, once you, you know, get to it or once it gets to expire. But on this uh, current little campaign I'm pushing, uh, this common sense campaign, now, whether you're a restorer or, you know, you're a professional restorer or you're just a novice guy, um, do not be afraid to embrace this and give it a try. Um, I have never once had an issue with peeling, okay? Um, uh, this product is not something that peels. You have to remove this. When it's expired, whether it's two years, three years, four years, whatever, uh, my vehicle's been going four years with it at the end of next month. Uh, you know, March, uh, around like March 20 or 30th uh, of uh, 2023 will be four months, okay? And they look brand new like the day I did them. But I'm the man and I know how to keep them that way. I know how to apply aftercare. And I keep up on it because I can't pull up to people and they're like, look at my lights. Oh, your lights are going bad right there. You're not going to do my lights. Makes no sense, right? So I stay up on my shit. I do aftercare at least every other month, you know, if not every month. Uh, okay, so and I know what to do and I know how to do it. I know, you know, I, I'm, I'm me. Okay, I'm the head of restoration pro. All right, so I've been pushing this little campaign here. Uh, when you clear coat a headlight when it is foggy, what are you doing? You're relying on your clear coat for one. Never rely on your clear coat to turn your headlights clear because if you do, once again, there's going to be side effects and they're not going to work properly. Okay, the number one thing about a headlight restoration is having them work properly. You don't want to say, oh, they look good. Hell yeah, I'm flossing. I'm looking good. But at nighttime, you you might not even know. You might not ever even know, but you're losing 40 yards of, of light. 40 yards of light. If you were on the freeway and uh, somebody fell off a motorcycle and you're doing 80 miles an hour on the freeway, you're probably not going to see them fast enough. You're going to run them over. That extra 40 yards, you know, will come in handy someday or, or somebody seeing you or whatever. But anyways, like I said, I'm pushing that campaign of when you apply clear coat on top of that foggy headlight structure, that foggy polycarbonate structure, what do you got? You got clear coat going on foggy, clear coat going on foggy. Now, when you apply clear coat in my method structure, okay, when you apply the clear coat onto clear, now use your common sense, which one is going to be better? You might not understand how. I'm telling you, watch that video. Watch that video. You might not know how, but I'll try to explain it, <laughs> okay? It's going to be common sense tells you he's right. It's going to be way better if I spray the headlight when it's clear, okay? That's why I don't have to do anything else after I clear coat it. Now here, this is how you want to, this is how you clear coat like a boss. You hit those edges. You do a fine layer all over the light, fine layer all over the light. Then you start hitting your heavy layer six, seven, six to seven inches away and you do it nice and fast. You do it nice and fast, overlapping, and you let it, you know, let it get nice and juicy and start pockmarking like that. Nice and juicy, you gotta pull away. Boom. And sometimes it just starts looking so good, you have to learn because in the beginning, I had, I had issues. Every other week I was uh, overcoating and I'd have to start over and stuff because it starts looking so good when you're spraying it, you get addicted to it. You're like, I'm just going to keep going. I'm just going to keep going. Ugh. And then you're like, oh, shit, my shit is dripping. Now you got to do it again. But it'll teach you because it'll teach you to stop and pull away from it because you're going to have to keep doing it over and over. You're going to have to knock it. You have to wait till it dries and knock it down again. Wait till it dries and knock it down again. So, you know, it, you'll learn, but it starts looking all good. And here's the thing. When you guys see this video, this is about halfway dry already, especially it wasn't that, uh, you know, cold at this day. This is already halfway dry. Okay, it's going to look like this. Sometimes I come back out to a customer's house to do another service on a different car or whatever, you know, a month, three months, four months later, and I look at the light and it looks just like this. Believe it or not, with this method. 
And then, you know, um, and I've also, uh, you know, I don't talk about shit that I don't know about. I've done all these tests. I've done headlights like that before and sprayed them when they were white or whatnot. And, um, you know, and I've put them side by side on the same vehicle with the same lights. And I've done light testing with measurements and gauges and actual visibility tests. I mean, actually look at it, pull up to a white wall side by side and see the difference. And you'll be like, what the fuck was I doing? Why was I doing headlights like that? Shh, it's not too late to change. But check this out. We're going to show you again. This is the headlight. This is the Meguiar's headlight coating, of course. We're going to show you this again. You know, shake up the can vigorously. Shake up the can. Number one, you always want it to be uh, kind of warm, okay? Uh, if it's a cold day, you want to put it in your pocket. You want to put it in a, in, a, in a cup of hot water. You want to put it, realistically, put it in your pocket is the best thing, okay? Your body is 98%, uh, 98.6, uh, you know, of heat normally. So when you put this metal can inside your pocket, okay, it just, you know, it just heats up to that temperature and you're good. You're Gucci. So look at this headlight. Look how clear that headlight is before I, before I spray it. It's a must. Once you find out, you can't go back. Now look at this. Not only is it going to perform better, but it's going to obtain a clarity that is unmatched. There's some guys on the internet that get some real good clarity from their methods. Their methods are good. Uh, you know, they might be using the wrong uh, stuff because they're not using headlight certified uh, stuff, which makes a difference because they make this stuff for uh, clear. But anyways, you see how that I did the same method around the outsides, light coat, get in real quick. It takes a couple seconds to headlight, you know, a couple seconds, maybe five seconds to clear coat that headlight. It doesn't take a minute. It doesn't take, you know, stripping it down and doing it again. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't take any of that. It doesn't take polishing it after I do it and then spraying it again and pop all that stuff is it's just you just you just jerk it off you just you just you just playing with yourself okay why do it you know when you can do it the right way or you know it's not the right way but I mean I mean it is the right way but I mean their way is cool too but it's not like this and you can see that you know if you have eyes you're watching this you can see that but, um, you know, there's many ways to do things, you know, but there's always going to be um, a higher level of doing things, okay? There's, there's many ways to do a math problem, but there's always the best math, best way to do certain math problems, okay? Um, this is the best way for something, okay? I'm not saying this is the best, but I am saying that this is the best. <laughs> okay, I'm saying there's other, there's other ways. I'm just trying to be a nice guy and just trying to be modest, okay? But, I mean, look at it. And these, and believe it or not, you know how sometimes people can say a picture does it no justice or the camera adds weight and this and that. When you're seeing it with your eyes, I mean, what you guys are watching right now is only 1080p. You know, I can only record in 1080p at the moment. So when you see your eyes up close in person, it's more than 4K clear, okay? You're, uh, it, you're, you, when you're seeing in person, it's like 20K, okay? So imagine how it looks in person, okay? The video doesn't do it justice, even though it's so clear on here. This is only 1080p I'm showing you. But the videos you're watching of mine are not even in 4K. To get to 4K, I'd have to buy a new camera. So it's like, you know, imagine that. Imagine how clear these are. But check out this one, too. All right. And this whole video, um, this one is already up. But see how I do the, the edges? I do the edges. This way, it helps uh, form a crust better. And then a light coat all over. And then quick. Boom, 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 boom. See that? Boom, 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 boom. Just on it. Boom, 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 boom. Real quick on it. Overlapping sprays. Overlapping sprays on it, multiple coats, multiple coats, back and forth, multiple coats over and over. Why? Because each layer you give, being something that dries uh, on the surface in 30 seconds, you know, just think, each layer I do over and over, each five seconds has started to dry and start to dry and start to dry and start to dry. So over and over, over and over real quick. But you see the whole little process there was like five, six seconds of clear coating. All right, so look at that, perfect. And you know, after a while, you will get the hang of spraying like this. This is how you spray like a boss. Now look at that headlight. Look at that, clear on top of clear. That's the way to go, people. Don't be fooled. Headlight restoration.